All right, let's talk about a few really good ideas for this question. It's not a hard one, but it brings in a lot of things that might be really important on future questions. First of all, they're asking for uh, the slope of the line of best fit, but they've given us a scatter plot, right? They, we have the line and then we have all these dots. Most of the time that the SAT gives us scatter plots, we don't care about the dots, okay? Unless they specifically ask for the actual values, okay? That's what the dots are, the actual values of whatever experiment or whatever we did. The line is going to be the predicted values. So yes, the predicted value, the line, is mathematically kind of coming from the dots. We never have to do that math. It's very complicated, but it's kind of like coming from the dots. It's like an average. Um, but when they ask questions about a scatter plot, it's almost always going to be about the line itself. So um, just ignore the dots. It doesn't matter. So here they're asking for the slope of the line. And this gets to my next point. The, the thing that many people, even well into like calculus, continuously mess up when they're looking at lines. We have to think about positive and negative slopes. That should be something that is automatic. A lot of people will do all this work calculating a slope and then forget that it's negative or somehow lose that negative. This is a positive slope, right? It's going up uh, to the right. So this is a positive slope. So the first thing you should do is just cross out choices A and B. Just get rid of the negatives. And I think that that's a smart way to approach a lot of slope questions when you have a graph. It's just like determine right away, is it a positive or negative slope? Make that your first step because if you make it your last step, it tends to be forgotten. You see an answer and it, you, you're drawn to it and you kind of forget that the sign of the slope matters. So remember, negative slope is going to go down to the right. This is going up to the right. From here, I would say just be smart and remember that your task is not to kind of like calculate the slope, it's to estimate it because the, the difference between C and D is so great that we don't, we're not, there's no real reason to be super precise here. So what I would do is I would pretend that, um, yes, this point here is really convenient, not because the dot is there, but because the line goes kind of right through an easy to read coordinate, right? It's going right through the corner of a box. So the coordinate here is four, two. I would pretend that the y-intercept of this line is zero, zero. The reason is that it's so close. And then I can just kind of count the boxes on the, on the graph instead of having to do the slope formula. I'll review the slope formula anyway, but let's just look at this here. If we think about slope in a, in a traditional, like just looking at the graph, the scale is fine, right? Each box is one, so we don't have to worry about the scale. But rise over run, means we rise from the zero, zero to this two, right? So the rise is two, and then the run is four. And we can reduce that, right, to one half or 0.5. So which choice is closest to 0.5? Well, yeah, definitely C, right? I mean, it, it's, not, it's not halfway between, it's much closer to C. That's definitely gonna be the answer. So this is a good example of like, don't do more work than you need. Yes, in school, you might need to get exact values and calculate the slope precisely because you're not given multiple choices, but use the multiple choices to your advantage when they're given to you. Like, especially if the numbers are very, very different, like you can estimate things. And so we don't need to break out the slope formula here. If we wanted to, ugh, I hate doing it. Remember the slope formula is something you do need to memorize. You will use in other places. Uh, slope between two points, is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, meaning the first point has a x coordinate and a y coordinate, so we put that first, and then the second point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate, so that's second, so it's just about lining it up. The ones and the twos are really just about symmetry here. I would still pick this point four two as um, my y1 and my y2, uh, or, or y1 and x1, so we can do uh, two and four, Right, and this is a, a common mistake with using the slope formula is there's a, there's a pull. You really want that X on top because X comes before Y in the alphabet. You really want that on top, but it's not. Y is on top, rise over run, right? Rise is our up and down, our Y coordinate. Then for the second one, you gotta be clever here, right? Because I don't really know what this Y intercept is. So you have to find a point to estimate. Um, if we were to stick with that, and, and generally speaking, if you're trying to find the slope and you have to estimate what your coordinates are, you're better off picking coordinates that are far apart. The closer your coordinates are together, 
on that line, the more likely that I'm uh, estimating wrong is going to create error. So I would say, okay, what is this actual point? Well, the x coordinate is definitely zero. The y coordinate, I don't know, looks like maybe like 0.25, a quarter. Let's see. So 0.25 and zero. So that would be, I could use my calculator, but that's 1.75 over four. Now I am going to use my calculator. 1.75 divided by four is uh, 0 0.4375, which obviously is closest to C. So we get there anyway. But notice, notice the different levels of work we need to do. And one reason I knew estimating would work as well is this is number eight out of 22 in the section. So it's a relatively easy question in the first module. This is not going to be something where there's like intense math or intense traps here. Just make sure you don't confuse positive and negative slopes. That's the biggest trap. So I know I said a lot for a very easy question here, but I like to use these easy ones as a way to review concepts that otherwise might come up in harder questions. And so use the easy ones in your practice as a way to make sure you understand those concepts. So if you don't, if you're iffy on any of this stuff, you've got to review it in order to really see that boost in score because that stuff is going to matter as just one step in a harder problem later. Make sure you memorize.